There's an uh, opportunity for us to take advantage of that. That's there. There are Kleenex in different places in the church. In addition to that, <clears throat> just to remind us, we're going to suspend our handshake apiece for the comfort of everyone here. Okay, so that happens. But we're still going to be able to worship, and that'll be a blessing. Okay? Do you all have your worship folders? I believe you should have your worship folders. Amen? All right. Welcome, everyone. I'm Pastor Williams, and you are... Oh, okay, LeVon's sister. I've not met you, huh? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. You're going to find out when she comes, her section's over there. Uh, okay. <laughs> and no one can sit in her seat, her and Marilyn and Marilyn, you know, they, her crew, her crew over there. All right. Yeah, that's right. Um, let's just open in prayer right now, and it will allow um, our director of music to bless us with a couple of praise and worship songs. And then we're going to just continue as God blesses us in worship, all right? Father, we thank you that in the midst of questions and doubt, in the midst of the earthly fear, the midst of this pandemic uh, that is around us, Lord, we can find peace and comfort in your house. We thank you that your spirit dwells here and that we can come into this place and connect to the spirit that dwells here. Uh, we praise and thank you, Lord God, for the church, the body of Christ, our brothers and sisters who are committed to be living examples of faithfulness in the midst of a world where there is doubt, worry, and fear. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, our worship service to you today. And we praise and thank you, Lord, we can be here to celebrate the sacrament of baptism, the sacrament of your body and your blood. And we ask, Lord God, that we would be mindful, Heavenly Father that you are the one leading, guiding, and directing, that you're molding and shaping us, even in the midst of the storms of life. We can trust you to shape us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Kevin Dean.
receive glory. our third week and celebrating the, the journey with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at Calvary. Let's rise and sing together. Welcome into this place. anniversary celebration last Sunday. What a glory to be 95, and you're looking good for 95. Amen? And we praise and thank God that he's opened the doors for us to do things at 96 and 97 and 98 or 99 or whatever he wants us to do until he comes again. It's a blessing to be in God's house today. And um, noted in your worship folder, but for me, but not for you, we do have the baptism of Bella and Mason, and that will happen when they arrive. You know what I mean? And so I didn't... <laughs> 
Levon, so it's laughing because she know what I'm talking about. Uh, when they arrive, we'll figure all that out and get it fit into the service. Amen. And then things will work out just fine at that point. And we'll bring both those beautiful angels into the body of Christ today. Amen. Let's turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we rejoice that we are yours. We rejoice that you have called us out of the darkness into the marvelous light. We rejoice that we're able to walk with you, Jesus, to Calvary in this Lenten season. We thank you that as we take the footsteps that you took to Calvary, that we're able to see the depth of your passion, the depth of your love, the depth of your grace, the depth of your mercy, the depth of how you wanted to set us free from sin and death and the devil and how your love for the Father and for us was overflowing in abundance. Guide us as we continue to walk with you and help us to see the world through your eyes, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Church, what an appropriate hymn uh, for this uh, time in our lives. Uh, I want Jesus to walk with me. If you take your hymn notes, hymn number 66, I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. When my
church, I know you want the same thing I want, right? You want Jesus to walk with us in this journey, especially in these times, right? I invite us at this time to sit or to kneel for our time of confession and absolution. The words of the confession and absolution are actually printed for you in your worship folders this morning as we come to our loving and gracious and merciful God and we thank him for sending Jesus Christ into this world, we realize that we are not always grateful enough. We continue to say things and do things and act in ways unbecoming, really, of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And so our time of confession and absolution says, Lord, we want to do better and thank you for Jesus. Amen? My brothers and sisters and fellow saints, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. We join our hearts and our minds together, saints. Almighty and loving God, you sent your son Jesus Christ into our world that we might be saved from the weight of our sins. You have given us your bond spirit so that we will be strengthened to tell others of this great gift of salvation. We now confess that we have failed to share this good news with others as we should. We have sinned against you in thoughts, word, and deed, and we ask you to forgive us we know that your love will cover our sins. Give us the joy of belonging to you and others in the body of Christ. Help us to support and strengthen each other as we reach out to those who do not yet know of your love, peace, and eternal hope. My fellow saints and brothers and sisters, Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Now, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore give voice to his grace and forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saints, in our prayers, we pray for the entire world in this epidemic. We pray that the church, the body of Christ, believers like you and I would be able to demonstrate what faith really is in the midst of suffering and that we maintain our commitment to Christ as Christ made his commitment to us. We pray for Bella and for Mason as they come to the waters of holy baptism this morning. We also uh, lift up and praise God for the seeds that were sold last Sunday at our anniversary celebration. We pray that those that were here were blessed and they'll come back and be a part of our family and uh, keep us in prayer uh, in the years to come that God gives to us. Also, we lift up um, our entire city, specifically uh, those entities that have closed in our city, that people will turn their hearts and their minds uh, toward God and be able to see that God will work things out and that children will get their homework done, that our college students won't forget that you can't tell the professor the dog ate your, pe ate your paper uh, when you have a computer and you have to just push send to get your homework done. Uh, we do all those things. We also pray. Uh, that God will be with uh, our sick and shut-in members as they continue to ask God's peace and blessings uh, upon them as well. Uh, we also want to ask God to lead God and direct our lives as we emotionally have to deal with the things around us every day, particularly this pandemic. We turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Father God, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come with our hearts fully open to your will. 
And Lord, we realize that in the midst of a world where we see fear, worry, and doubt, that as your church, we have to be living examples of faithfulness because you have been faithful to us, Lord. You've never left us and you have never forsaken us. You have sent your best gift into this world, your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, to save us from sin and death and the grave. You've guided us through this earthly life, through the ups and the downs and the difficult times and the times of celebration. And Lord, we want the world to know that by faith we walk and not by sight. Guide us, Holy Spirit, to be living examples of Jesus in this world today, a suffering servant. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the 95th anniversary celebration you allowed us to have last Sunday. As we continue this celebration throughout this month and throughout this year, we ask your spirit to guide us to see the world through your eyes, that others may understand that they are saved by grace through faith alone in Jesus Christ, and that faith is something they can build on and mature in every day as they continue to grow in a relationship with the Lord. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for our city and all the various entities that are impacted by this pandemic. We ask for your blessings, your guidance, your forgiveness, Lord God. We pray that you would show our leaders in the city and the leaders in our country and the leaders around the world how to make wise choices as we work together uh, to be sure that all people are safe. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for our church members who are sick and who are shut in. We, we think about Don Lee, and we ask, Lord God, your blessings upon him as he's called for prayer. Uh, we praise and thank you, God, for Rosalind and for, and for Melba, Lord God. We ask your peace and blessings upon them and to comfort them and to keep them well and to keep them healthy, Lord God, as well. We ask, Lord, that others that we name in our hearts this morning, family members, friends, and loved ones, co-workers, Lord, who are suffering with something at this time in their life, physically or spiritually, that, Lord, you will increase within them that hunger and desire to get closer and closer to you, knowing that you will answer all of their cries. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord, we pray for our students who are no longer in classrooms, Lord, but are having to be at home and, and studying. We pray, Lord, that you would keep their hearts and their minds focused on the tasks before them. And that they, Lord God, will remember the responsibility to continue to walk in faith and knowing that you're preparing them uh, for something great as they do their homework, as they take their tests, as they write their papers, Lord God. Let them keep uh, committed to the task. Lord, in thy mercy. <clears throat> Lord God, Heavenly Father, we, we rejoice that as we look to the future with hope, we know that you're with us always. And we ask, Lord God, that you would guide us uh, in this time in our lives and our journeys. Thank you for the traveling mercies you've given to those who are having to travel. Guard and watch over them, Lord God, in every day. Let them arrive safely to their destinations and safely back home. Lord, in thy mercy. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Chart in heaven, hallowed be thy
our next hymn of praise is hymn number 69, Nothing But the Blood. In a time like this, the blood of Jesus means the world to us, amen? It's the blood of Jesus that covered our sins, it's the blood of Jesus that gives us freedom, and the blood of Jesus reminds us that we are free to serve and not to live in fear, amen? We receive our tithes and our offerings as we sing together, give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the whole Because we're thankful and grateful to God for giving us this life that we have, for blessing us with so many special gifts and talents, and giving us the opportunity to return back to him a portion of his blessings for us to be sure that his work continues until he comes again. That's a reason for us to rise and sing together. Thank you, Lord. I just want to 
thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so oh, good. You've been so good. I just want to Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that somehow in your divine wisdom, you were able to knit us together in our mother's womb and then breathe life into us and then set us on a course of life that would be guided by your divine plans for us as your sons and your daughters. We rejoice today, Heavenly Father, that we are faithful and giving back to you a portion of the blessings you've given to us. Lord, use our time and use our talents and use these, our treasures, Lord, to advance your kingdom, to be sure that others know that you're the Lord of lords and the King of kings, that you are truly Emmanuel, God with us, that you're truly coming again, and that they need to be prepared as we are to see you face to face. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And the saints of God said, amen. We are seated, church. Let's go into the word, deacon, please. Let's go into the word. Our first lesson is found in the book of Exodus. Reading from the 17th chapter and the first seven verses. That's on page 114 in the Bibles of the If you are there, please let me know by saying amen. The whole Israelite community sent out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephadim, but there was no water for the people so they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Walk on ahead of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the place Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. For our second lesson, we turn to the epistle of our brother Paul, Roman Church. We look at Romans 5. We will look at the first eight verses. That's page 1750 or 1753 in the Bibles in your pews. This is about how God gives us peace and joy in him. That's Romans 5 verses 1 to 8. If you are there, if you are ready, please let me know by saying amen. Here is what the word says. Looking at what God has done, Paul writes, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace, by which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love 
into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. See, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man or woman, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died. This gospel reading is found in John 4, verses 6. Long um, reading. If you're not able, you need not stand up. But if you feel like you can wait for 26 verses to be read, you can stand up. John chapter 4, verse 1 to 26. Found page 16. Nobody say amen when you're there. John chapter 4, verse 1. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciple. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to, uh, to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciple has gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jesus do not associate, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered to her, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did also his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a great prophet. Our ancestors worshipped in this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. 
You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet, a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the fathers in the spirit and in truth. For they are the king of they, they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. This is the gospel of the Lord. The confession that's in your worship folder, a reflection of our faith together, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the words of the Apostles' Creed, it helps us to identify with our fellow brothers and sisters <clears throat> who we are, uh, what kind of God we serve, and why we serve that God together as a people of God. We confess our faith together, saints. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is my confession and belief. Amen. Church, you may be seated. Kevin, if you would bless us, we will be more grateful to you. Bow down and the seas will roar at 
Lord, we appreciate having the assurance that when you make promises to your people, you keep them from the beginning of time to now, Lord God, you have been shaping us and molding us, and we praise and thank you that your word is so crystal clear, that we just have to remain people who are walking by faith and not by sight, and we rejoice this morning, Lord God, that we're able to gather here as your people with other saints, Lord God, whether they're at home, Lord, worshiping you, or whether they're in uh, uh, places of uh, worship like this, Lord God, that we are lifting up our hearts and our minds to you in gratitude and appreciation. And we're also seeking your divine wisdom for us as your sons and daughters, especially, Lord, in these days and in these times with so many things happening around us. Lord, may we remain faithful as you have been faithful to us. May we stand upon the promises that you've made to us and may we never, ever give up on you for you certainly did not give up on us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's thank Kevin for blessing us this morning, church. Thank you. You know, we are in those times when we're dealing with this uh, virus and we have so many things in our hearts and our mind and we're living in a world, as you can see, uh, where the world is using the word fear and doubt and worry and I'm encouraging the church to use the word faith, commitment, and promises. And as we look at God's word this morning, as, as God was dealing with Moses uh, and Moses was dealing with the children of Israel and their faith, God had brought them out and had blessed them and given their own land, and yet they were still complaining, and God said very clear, okay, here we go again, let me give you a little something to drink, right? Because clearly you don't get it. I will be with you. I will not allow you to suffer and to die at the hands of this world. And then the Apostle Paul is being so clear to the children, uh, to the, uh, his brothers and sisters in Rome, to let them know what it means, right? He says, you know, what does perseverance uh, mean if you don't understand faith along with it, right? At the end of it, you're going to have character and more hope. As you go through the trials and the struggle, you will have more character and more hope to keep going every day. And Jesus got in line with everyone else and really threw stones, really, at this woman. But he didn't do that at all. As a matter of fact, he said, I'm going to give you living water, the kind of water that you'll never thirst again all of your life, right? What a blessing for us to have God's word guiding us uh, in the midst of the issues and the problems of this life in which we're on. For the saints that are here this morning, did you bring your, you know, we're doing our Lenten devotional. Did you bring it with you, saints? Yeah. My, my, my members, my faithful members, some of it happened on their tablets. You know, we're, we're there. Um, Raphael, there are a few copies if you want to grab them at the door there for our visitors that are here. We're in a series right now in our Lenten journey, uh, visitors and guests. And in this series, we're looking um, at <clears throat> uh, Jesus setting us free. How appropriate is that, considering the world we're in right now? And this series is helping us to walk step by step with Jesus and to see how um, he then handles all the various issues of this life as he's being challenged um, by the world on his way to Calvary to pay for our sins. And so um, Raphael may have a couple copies that he can give you as he's coming down there. If you'd like to have a copy, you can raise your hand there. He's got a couple of them there. Page 21 is where we're at, page 21 with a couple of them, okay? All right, we're on that one. It's uh, freedom from shame, and it goes along with our scripture text as well, all right? All right, I think Sylvia says she wants one. Sylvia, you don't have yours? You didn't bring it with you? Okay, all right. We're, we're talking about the devotional. You didn't, he got the wrong thing. Sorry, guys. There's a whole stack of devotionals, yeah, back there. Let me go ahead. He'll get it to you in just a moment. Let me just start reading, okay? 
Yeah, we're talking about the devotions. Early in the morning, Jesus came again to the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. That's John 8. We read John 4 a moment ago, and Jesus dealt with the woman at, at Jacob's well. Now he's dealing with yet another woman, page 21 when you get there, okay, uh, who he's trying to teach her some things as well about this life. Shame, embarrassment, um, being backed up against the wall, being stuck between a rock and a hard place and having to make decisions, right? And sometimes with shame and embarrassment and guilt kind of kick in, um, we uh, forget about the word faith in the midst of all of that because all of us have made bad choices, have had to make decisions on the fly or we regret some things we've done. And then as a result of that, uh, we can forget about it. We know that God forgives us for it. But boy, family members and friends, boy, they can certainly hold those things over our head, can't they? They'll, you remember you did that, and you remember you did that, and I did that. And Jesus makes it so clear in our text, you know, who, who has uh, no sin cast the first stone, right? So, so very important for us. I'm going to read that for us right now. We understand that as we're on this journey of faith, that all of our sins, all of our bad decisions, all of our uh, rock and a hard place situations and choices, all that has been taken to the cross. And that Jesus is taking care of that once and for all. And there is no guilt, there is no shame, there is no embarrassment for us as the people of God today because Jesus Christ paid for our sins once and for all. Amen? All right. So here's how our text reads, and we're going to get into this a little bit further. Shame is a horrible thing. This woman had sinned greatly, yes, but who would not feel sorry for her? Dragged her out into the light of day to face public shame in front of the religious leaders at the temple, alone, possibly half-dressed with no one to defend her, and even her, missing, even her lover missing from her side. And she would have known there were worse to come. Such women were stoned um, for their sin. She would lose her life, and if she had children, they would lose their mother. There was no hope for her. But though she didn't realize it, uh, there actually was hope. Jesus himself was there in the middle of her horrible situation. But what was he doing? Riding on the ground? She didn't understand, but she knew one thing. He was not joining the chorus of condemnation all around her. He was silent, busy riding. When they kept bugging him, he finally stood up long enough to say, to want to say one thing. Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. You know the rest of the story. How the leaders slucked away one by one to nobody was left but Jesus. The woman was safe and free, and Jesus' final words to her was, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on sin no more. Jesus shows an amazing gentleness to a sinner caught in the deadly trap of shame. He does nothing to add to it. Indeed, he gets rid of the audience that is gloating over her embarrassment. He reminds them of their own sin and shame, and they leave. And then in private, he sets her free. The sinless son of God refuses to condemn her. He will bear her shame and ours instead on the cross. This is comfort for anyone who has memories to make them cringe in shame. Jesus calls us to himself not to condemn, but to forgive, to cleanse, to relieve, to take our shame from us and put it on his own back. He nails it to his cross. He sets us free free from sin, free from shame, free to live as God's forgiven people, even you, even me, right? Everything that we have done incorrectly that has brought us shame or embarrassment or that has had our back up against the wall and we've had to make a choice between two negatives, all of that is now placed on the cross of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As a church, then, we have a responsibility to act like we are free. 
And to walk in that freedom, to walk under that grace, to walk under that umbrella of God's love and allow that to be our motivation each and every day that God gives to us. So as we look at what um, Moses had to deal with with the children of Israel and how the Apostle Paul reminds us what perseverance will bring character and hope. And as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ talks about living water, and as he goes a little bit further, he says, I'm not going to cast a stone at you. I'm going to set you free because in me you find your freedom. We can think about our own lives. Amen? All perfect people, please stand up. All perfect people, please stand up. Amen? We all know what it means to falter, to make bad decisions. We all know what it means to have people poke at us for the rest of our life about those choices and those decisions. But we also know because of our relationship with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we have been set free. And that we are people who walk by faith and not by sight. We're people who fully understand that we're saved by grace through faith alone and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We all know that when Jesus paid the price on the cross for our sins, that every one of our sins, past, present, and future sins, were on the cross. The weight of the cross was there. So there is no shame, there is no fear, there is no word, there is no doubt in our lives as a people who know who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Amen? Tell your neighbor, in Jesus I have no shame. That's right. In Jesus we don't have any shame and embarrassment. God has taken care of us, church, and that's the joy that we have as we walk in the midst of this epidemic. Fear is driving us. Hoarding is driving us. Selfishness is driving us. A lack of understanding that God has got our attention now. Amen? Huh? And when God wants to get our attention, he knows there's not one scientist that can find a cure when he's trying to get our attention. Amen? He has the entire world decision in 2020. And now we have to turn and say, Lord, forgive me. For I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. Amen? That's what we have to do, church. And by doing that, God then will hear us and answer us. A cure is coming, we know. Because God is not through with us yet. God still has plans for us. God knows that there are a lot of people around the world who still need to know that he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, that he's the Alpha and the Omega right? That he's the one who came to save us in the beginning. So there's still people around the world who are worshiping all kinds of things except God. And now it'll be our wonderful privilege and joy by the all means possible to tell them through social media, through one-on-one relationships, through any kind of communication we can give to be sure that they understand in the midst of the suffering of the world that we have a faith that can move mountains. Amen? We have a faith that can move mountains. Mustard seed faith of the believers who understand God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, we have to say, well, I'm still human, Pastor. I'm worried, you know. I'm a little concerned about this and what's going to happen over here and what's going to happen over there and I heard that that's going to happen over there, and and I got to the grocery store, and I couldn't find this, and I was driving my car, and the gas prices went up. Listen, this is God's world. God created it. Go back to Genesis if you need to, church. He said, let there be, and there was, right? And at the end of it all, he said, it is good. So God is in control of his creation. Now, he allows man to think that we're in control of something. Amen? But in reality, we're in control of nothing. This is God's creation. He's cared for it from the time he created it, and he will care for it until he says, it is done. So our wonderful joy and our wonderful privilege as the people of God is to be able to carry that message out to others. The word is not fear. The word is faith. Can you say it with me? Not fear, but faith. Not fear, but faith. 
Faith in a God who has never left us, who has never forsaken us, a God who has brought us through the valley of the shadow of death, a God who has said, I am your shepherd and I will never leave you and never forsake you. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen? Tell your neighbor, that's the God I serve. That's right. And in the midst of the world in which we're in today, we have to encourage others to, to come away from thinking that they're controlling something. Our God in control of his creation. And the privilege we have is to exist in it until he says to us, well done, thy good and faithful servants. Jesus made it very clear. He didn't even know the day nor the hour that he was going to come back as a son to redeem us. So he told us to be what, church? You know what he told us to be? Ready. Be ye ever ready. He didn't say get ready next week. He didn't say think about getting ready. He said be ready. I don't know when the Father is going to call me to come back and to be judged. Be ready. Right? How can we be ready? We're in the word. We're being sure like Bella and Mason to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to be faithful with our time, our talents, and our treasures to be sure that we are faithful with a little so God will give us a little bit more, amen, to do his work until he calls us home. We are the people of God carrying out the mission of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the world is looking at us, church. The world is looking at us. What, what are the Christians doing? Are they running and hiding or are they standing up? Are they talking about the love of Jesus? Are they talking about what God's going to do, right? Where is that God? They said that God was big. He was mighty. He was powerful. He was omnipotent. Well, where is that God? Well, we can tell them our God reigns, amen? You may not know it, but our God reigns over the heavens and over the earth. And we can count on our God each and every day of our lives to meet our needs, amen? He did it for the Israelites, he did it for the New Testament church, and he'll do it for us today. All right? Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word being a light for our paths. We praise and thank you, Lord God, for the way in which you're always shaping us and creating in us a hunger and a desire and a thirst. And Lord, in the midst of this epidemic, may we go back to what we know to be true our relationship with you that has never failed us. From the time you knitted us together in our mother's womb, from the time you breathed life into us, from the time that you set us on the course and the journey of life, Lord, you've been guiding us and protecting us and molding us and shaping us and creating us a hunger and desire to look like you, Jesus. And we thank you that through our faith, through your word, and through our baptisms, Lord, that you see us as pure and righteous and holy and that we can stand upon your promise that you would never leave us and you would never forsake us, that you would guide us all the days of our life, Lord God. And may we be bold and confident as we leave the sanctuary this morning to be walking, living, bold examples of God-given faith for a world that is looking at fear. May we set them free. May we let them know that tomorrow is all about God. Today is what we have. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you may have a rest, give me Jesus. Dark midnight was my cry, dark midnight was my cry, dark midnight was my cry, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you may have all the rest. Give me Jesus, God bless you. Just
Just about the break of day. Just about the break of day. Just about the break of day. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You may have all the rest. Give me Jesus. Oh, and when I come to die. God gave us two commands, right? Baptize, right? And preach, right? Baptize, preach. And what did he say go do it at? What did he say go do it? Around the world, right? And so one of the privileges that the church has is to offer new life to every man, woman, and child. It's not about your age. It's about the new life. We all have physical birth dates, amen? But we also have baptismal dates. That's our new birthday, amen, where we have our spiritual birthday as well. And today, Mason and Bella will have spiritual birthdays to celebrate, to know that God gave them physical life and that God also gave them spiritual life. And that spiritual life that they'll be able to journey here on earth all their days and be able to know that if God calls them to heaven, it won't be any doubt in anyone's mind where they're at, amen, whatsoever. Dear friends in Christ, we learn from God's holy, divine, and inerrant word that we cannot save ourselves. That it is only through God's love and through his mercy that we can be members of his family, forgiven of all of our sins, and have the promise of heaven in our lives. In holy baptism, our Lord gives us all these blessings and the gift of the Holy Spirit who lives with us all the days of our life. I ask you now as parents... Is this what has brought you here today with these children, that they may be a part of the family of God? If so, answer yes. Mason, receive the sign of the cross over your head and over your heart as one who's been redeemed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bella, receive the sign of the cross over your head and over your heart as one who's been redeemed by our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. To this end, our Lord commanded baptism, saying, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. And he says, furthermore, I tell you the truth. Unless a man is born of water and his spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. And the holy apostles of the Lord also wrote, this promise is for you and for your children. Baptism now saves you. Amen. All right, ladies first, right? So let's see if we can get Bella over here. All right, all right. All right. You're gonna see. You're gonna see your your little sister first. All right, and see to do it. All right. Can you bring her down there, Daddy? Come on down there, man. Come on down here. Come on, all right. <laughs> all right. Bella, on this Lord's Day, we baptize you. Uh-oh, come on now. I need, I need a forehead, Daddy. Can you give me a forehead? I'm trying not to mess up her pretty hair. Mama worked all night on that hair, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. We baptize you in the name of the Father. All right. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. There you go, Daddy. That's a baptismal napkin, okay? Amen. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, Mason. All right. Can you bring Mason around here for me? All right. You want to pick him up for me? Can you get him? 
You got that? You got him? All right. You get him all the time, huh? All right. All right. May we baptize you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. All right. Good job. There we go. All right. Here we go. All right. What we have there are their baptismal candles, which um, since they have a baptismal since they have a baptismal birthday, these candles, I'm, in, I'm encouraging you all as family members to support them that on this day, on the 15th of March, that you light their candles as they grow older and remind them that the day that they receive a spiritual birthday, and that spiritual birthday then reminds them that they're connected to Jesus forever, all their lives. Their baptismal certificates are there, signed by our vicar and signed by our deacon and myself as well. It's just a confirmation for them, something you can frame and put up as well. There are a couple little gifts, I think, that you guys have those things for them back there to give them as well. And uh, to God be the glory, all right? No, let's pray, church, all right? Let's celebrate first. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Amen. We pray together. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful and so grateful that you continue to remind us how to carry out your work. And to have Bella and Mason a part of this family and to know, Lord God, that your spirit now is going to shape them and mold them and carry them and protect them. To know, Lord God, that you have great plans for them because of the power of the spirit that now exists in their lives. Lord, we are so thankful that we can stand back and, and watch, and then we can also come alongside them as your church and support them and encourage them and remind them that they are children of God and that all things are possible through Christ who gives them strength. We pray, Holy Spirit, that all harm and danger would, would be taken away, that Satan would have no power in advance in their life, and as they grow to be faithful servants of the Lord, that we'll remember this day in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Let's praise the Lord again for Bella and for Mason. Amen. What an absolute blessing. Absolute blessing. Okay. You can return to your, you're going to blow those out and, and give them the other things. Okay. All right. Very good. I'm going to give them their candles. Not, not the base, just the candle. Yeah. Okay. And get, there's a box for them and everything. All right. Okay. And uh, those bulletins, Jack, those there, I actually made a special set of bulletins for you guys, okay, with their names in it, all right? All right, no problem. All right, family. Very good. <laughs> all right, there we go. And that's for Mason. That's for little Mason. There's Mason, all right? All right, to God be the glory. You may return to your seats, okay? To God be the glory. All right, very good. Mm -hmm. We're coming to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ in just a moment. And normally we would have the sh handshake of peace and all the loving and that type of thing and hugging and kissing. But, you know, we're going to suspend that for a while uh, until we know further. But it doesn't mean the love of Jesus is not flowing through us. Amen. To each other. And that time of encouragement, we continue to give each other. I know the family is, provide, is providing a beautiful baptismal meal after church today. So we gather with them in the fellowship hall to celebrate that as well. So if you look in the front of your hymnals and you see the page 30, go to page 30 in the front of your hymnal. There's a hymn there called This is the Feast. And this is the feast as a preparation to come and receive this precious gift 
of Jesus' true body and blood that we sing together so that our hearts and our spirits connect together with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank him for going to the cross, paying for our sins, and as a result of that, then we're able to be blessed and nourished and know that we're forgiven in his, in his body and in his blood. If you're able, let's rise and sing together. This is the feast. A victory for our God, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Saints, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper when giving thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace, Lord, be with you always, saints. Welcome to the table of our Lord. Be seated as our ushers direct you to the altar this morning. Go up, bring me a, Kevin's not by himself. Let's bring me a crew. Okay, won't you put that pillow down? Just bring me some people. Shut that door for me.
the blood that Jesus shed for me. That gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and it Blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It soothes my doubts and calms my fears. Gives me strength from day to day. It will never be its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows. Gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It will never lose its power. I 
rise for the blessing of the Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit guide our footsteps in these turbulent times to let the world know about Jesus and what he has done for us, he will do for them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We sing together words of doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly. our closing hymn number 72. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down for the cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name, oh blood applied glory to his name I am so wondrously saved from sin Jesus so sweetly abide within there at the cross where he took me in glory to his name oh blood applied glory to his name oh precious I am so glad I have entered in Jesus has saved me and keeps me clean glory to his name oh And glory to his name. Come to the fountain so rich and sweet. Cast your poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be great, complete. Glory to See the church for just a moment, if you could. What a blessing. Let's thank the Lord for Mason and Bella being a part of the family of God and all their family. What an absolute blessing. Amen.